Okay, I'm gonna solve another question from the conservation of mass. There's a question where it includes a non-uniform velocity profile, okay? So look in here. So what happens is at the section number one, and this is what the flow direction is, the velocity is uniform, all right? And it's given as V1, a constant velocity of V1. Let's actually write it over here, V1. So then there is this black box over here. And what happens is after this black box, the flow comes out like this. Okay, so it's a parabola and the velocity profile is given as this u. Basically, let's uh, discuss this. u will be u max times, it's kind of weird, right? 1 minus r over capital R square. All right, so this r is the variable. So this is the r, okay? So it's defined from the center line. And then as I go, for instance, r can be equal to capital R then I'm at that point. If I'm at r is equal to capital R divided by 2, so I'm right in the middle of it, okay? So that's what it indicates. So basically, this is a constant value, this is a variable, this is a constant value as well. Do you notice where the u max is obtained? u max is obtained when r is equal to 0, right? So when you plug that, let's see what happens. r is equal to 0 over here. If this is 0, then 1 minus 0 is 1. I get myself u max, so that's good. How about let's verify over here as well. Let's put r is equal to capital R. So it becomes r over r, which means this is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. So I get myself 0. So that's good. So this is the correct velocity profile that is given to me. And we will cover this in module 11. And this is a viscous flow velocity profile. This is inviscid flow velocity profile. All right. So you don't have to know this. We'll, we'll cover these down the road. My question is asking me, obtain an expression for V1 as a function of this U max. And you'll find out all other terms will drop out. The only variable will be U max that I have here. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to read the question, which I did. And the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my control volume over here. Okay. So like this. There we go. Okay. That's my control volume. The next step is to write my assumptions clearly. Is this steady? Well, it is non-uniform, so does it kind of change the way that I approach this? Nah. Steady, steady. There's no time variance that I can see off. So I still will have steady. How about constant density? Right over here. It's water. So I'm going to go ahead and say that this is constant density. Okay, next. How about uniform flow? Well... You may want to take it easy with the section number two, right? It's not, but uniform flow one. Let's write it. Uniform at one. So then what we're going to do is we're going to look at our analysis. And this is going to look like a weird one. At the inlet, I'm going to have V1, A1. Let's call this inlet. And the, the rest is going to look like this. It's going to be V exit, DA exit. So I will look at the first one. Um, so let's look at the first one. The first one is V1 times A1. The second one becomes a little bit more complicated, okay? So then let's go up there and try to understand this. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull my U from here and plug it in right over here. This is my V exit. Okay, so far so good. Let's put one integral. I'll explain why. This is going to be U max times 1 minus r divided by r squared. So, that, so far, so good. What is dA exit? dA exit. Remember, this is a circular pipe. So what I'm going to do is, this is something that I really want you to know, okay? So if I have a circular cross-section like this, so let's say this is the center and this is the r. So the thickness of this is going to be like this. And I'm going to call this thickness to be dr. Okay, and what I have is R is it from the center over here, and this is the thickness of is dr. Okay, so and what I'm going to do is, as this is such a small area, the distance between this dr is so small compared to the R value that I have, have here, I'm going to say that this length of this is going to be 2 pi R. Okay, so let's write it over here as well. So the length of this is going to be 2 pi R. Okay. 
And note that I'm not going 2 pi r plus dr divided by 2, right? Technically, that's the right one. But it's not going to matter. The r is so small compared to that, okay? So that's how we will approach this. 2 pi r is the length of it, and the thickness is dr. The thickness is dr over here, and this is 2 pi r, right? I'm just laying it on a flat surface. Think about it. I'm just cutting this up and just opening this up here, opening that up over here, this is what I'm going to get. dr will be the thickness of it, 2 pi r will be the length of it. The differential area that I'm going to get will be 2 pi r dr. Okay? Now, what I want you to understand is this though. This is not going to change from question to question. Okay? I will be referring to this a lot, okay, in fluid mechanics. So 2 pi r dr, that will be the dA. Okay? Now I showed you, I'm not going to do the derivation every single time. Just want to let you know. What will be the boundaries of the integral? Is it going to go from minus r to plus r? No, it's going to go from, this is the way this is defined. So r is from the center. As it's from the center, it's going to start at 0, and it's going to fan out all the way to the capital R, which is a constant value. So it's going to go from 0 to capital R. Okay? So the left-hand side becomes v1, which is what I'm being asked, and it's going to be pi r square, right? Or you can write pi d square over 4. Some books write this as d divided by capital D square. That's fine, it's the same thing. If you think about it, if you write d is equal to 2r and capital D is equal to 2, capital R, then the 2's cancel and I get my same equation. I just prefer to write this way, okay? So now, is my u max a function of dr? No. What does that mean? You know, u max looks a little bit more scary, but let's say that this is a number of 5. It's a, at the end of the day, it's a number. Can I take 5 out of the integral? Oh, yeah, I sure can. So let's write u max. So this parentheses, let's hang on there. Can I take 2 pi? Oh, yeah, I can take 2 pi out of the integral as well. Can I take r, out of, r outside the integral? Like from r to over here? Yeah, you can, but that would be very wrong, right? You don't want to do that because... The variable is dr, so you want to hang on to that, okay? And then that's all I have, so take it easy with taking parameters outside. So it's going to be from 0 to capital R, so then this will be 1 minus r divided by r, capital R, square times r dr. All right, so let's, uh, let's try to make it a little bit easier on me. So it's going to be v1 r square will be 2 u max. Okay, so then... Let's clearly demonstrate this, 0 to capital R. So if I multiply by R, it's going to be R minus R cubed divided by R square, right? dr. I simply distributed this R to here, it become R, and I, when I multiply R square divided by capital R square times R, it becomes R to the power of 3 divided by R square. Okay, one more step, then I should be very close. So will be V1 r squared is equal to 2u max. Okay, what is the integral of the first term over here? What is the integral of that, r dr? Um, if r looks a little bit scary to you, it's like x, okay? When I ask what is the integral of x dx, people say x squared over 2 immediately. When I ask the same student what is the integral of r dr, they just think for a minute, right? So it's the same. So if, if it kind of confuses you, just think in your mind. Obviously, don't write it down. But that is like an x. It's still a variable, right? So this is going to be r squared over 2 minus what is the r cube over capital R squares integral? That's going to be r to the 4 divided by 4 r squared. Okay. So I sometimes ask these kind of questions in the exam. And take it easy. Sometimes I see students doing this r to the power of 3 divided by 3 kind of you know, this R, capital R, is like 1, 2, 5, 10. It's a constant value, okay? And so, then let's close the parentheses. This is going to be from 0 to capital R. V1, R squared is equal to 2 U max times, okay? When I plug R over here, this is going to be capital R squared divided by 2 minus capital R to the power of 4 divided by 4 R squared. And when I plug 0, as you can see here, this is vanishing, this is vanishing. I'm not rewriting it to save some space. So this r becomes square, right? So now, so what does this become now? 
So that becomes r squared over 2 minus r squared over 4. So it's going to be 2, 2 minus 1. So it's become, it becomes r squared divided by 4. Okay? So then v1 times r squared will be equal to 2 u max times r squared over 4. R squares cancel one another. So I got myself v1 is equal to u max divided by 2. So this is the answer I'm looking for. Okay, and as a hint to you, this is the, actually the average velocity for that particular non-uniform velocity profile. Okay, so if you go up over here, if you have something like this, it's going to be right like this. Did you see that? And also, you may even see the way that I draw at the beginning of the question. You kind of understand, right? This is one unit, this is two units.